Hello and welcome to this video all about probability trees. So let's go straight into looking at this. So we've got this first example here. Um, it says Hannah is going to play one game of chess and one game of backgammon. So two separate games. The probability that she's going to win chess is 0 0.6. The probability that she wins backgammon is 0 0.7. So first of all, I'd like you to draw this, quick sketch of it, and complete the tree, 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 tree diagram with these probabilities. And then I'd like you to work out the probability that she wins both of these games. So this is where a probability tree is useful. It can be useful because it helps you to figure out the probability of more than one independent event occurring so by independent event i mean an event that cannot be influenced by another event so for example here it doesn't matter whether hannah wins chess that's not going to influence the probability of her winning the backgammon okay so pause your video and have a go at this one and here is your solution to the first part of this so if you take a look here we've got um, the chess first, so these are your first set of branches. Well, we already knew that the probability of her winning was 0 0.6. So the probability of her not winning must be 0 0.4. And that's because, remember, probabilities have always got to add up to 1 when they're written as decimals. So if we take 0 0.4 away from 1, we get 0 0.6. If we take that 0 0.6 away from 1, we get the 0 0.4. Very similar idea on this one. You've just got to take that 0 0.7 away from 1 to get the 0 0.3. Now the second part of this says, which work out the probability that she wins both games. So we need to follow the branches for this. So if we follow this branch, we've got the win um, for the chess. And we need to keep going along this second set of branches. And then we've got the win for the backgammon. So we've got those two individual probabilities there, but if we multiply them together, we will get the probability of winning both of those games, which is 0 0.42 or 42% if you want it as a percentage. Okay, slightly more complicated example this time then. So John plays a card game where he can win, draw or lose. The probability that he wins is 0 0.5. The probability of him drawing is 0 0.3. He's going to play two games of this particular card game um, or game, whatever it is. Um, we've got the tree, tree diagram here. So first of all, I'd like you to sketch it out and complete it. And then I'd like you to work out the probability of him winning both of those games. OK, so here are your answers to these. So if you take a look at each set of branches, we've got 0 0.5 here, 0 0.3, which we already knew. If we take those away from 1, then we're going to get that 0 0.2 here, because remember, all the probabilities have got to add up to make 1 once they're written as decimals. Now, these probabilities will be the same all the way down these branches. So the probabilities do not change if he wins the first game, if he draws it, or if he loses it. So those three probabilities stay the same all the way down. So we've got one set of three there, another set of three if he draws there, and then the other set of three if he loses here. Well, the, the question I was asked you, I asked you was, what's the probability of win-win? So we've got 0 0.5 for that one, and we've got 0 0.5 for that one. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 will give you 0 0.25. Okay, here's a look, to, here's another example then. Um, it's a little bit of a slightly different one this time, because this time we're going to be using fractions. So in this example, Tina's got two bags of counters, bag A and bag B. She's got five red and three blue in bag A. And then four red and five blue in bag B. And she's taking a counter at random from each bag. And we're being asked to complete the diagram here. So we're going to be using fractions for this. So in each bag, it's important to know the total number 
of counters. So we're going to have eight in the bag A, and then we're going to have nine in the bag B. So that's going to be your denominator on those fractions. Now I'm going to let you pause your video now, see if you can work out the rest yourself. Okay, and here is your solution to this. So we've got five out of eight there, so five eighths for the red counters, three eighths for the blue counters. And then for bag B, it was out of nine, so four out of nine, so four ninths for the red and five ninths for the blue. So bear in mind, you can write um, probability as fractions, decimals, or percentages. Here though, um, it's got to be, it's, it's easiest probably to do it as a fraction rather than as a decimal. The final question I asked you there was what the probability, what is the probability that she takes two blue pens? Well, for this, we're going to need to look at this one here, which is three out of eight on bag A, and then we've got five ninths on bag B. So now we've just got to multiply those fractions together. So three times five, the top numbers on the fractions is 15. 8 times 9 is 72 on the bottom number. And that gives us the probability of selecting blue, blue. And that is it for this video. So thank you very much for listening. Please hit subscribe and there's, there'll be loads more videos coming your way. Bye bye.